So welcome to the first module in Agency in a Box. In this specific video, I'm gonna be covering behind the scenes math of my agency revenue and all of my expenses, how I get leads and where all of the actual money that I'm making for my agency comes from. And I'm also gonna be sharing the difference between a traditional agency and this model that I've created. And lastly, your first objective to creating this model and the process that I went through if you decide this is you know, a model that you would like to implement into your business. So. I'm going to be sharing how I made the transformation from a generalist agency owner that had really no leverage. I was trading my time for money to a product based agency and how I created a productized service and a software as a solution hybrid. So I dropped out of college in 2016, and if you told me that this is what was possible back then, I really wouldn't have believed it. It may not seem like it, but I'm just like you. I did put the work into creating my life the way that I wanted. But I truly couldn't be more grateful and humbled to share this information with you and to serve you at the highest level by showing you what's possible. So first things first, I can only share from personal experience about what I've done, the process that I've gone through, and how I've made certain decisions. At the end of the day, you have to create your own synthesis of different bodies of work to design things the way that you want them. So with that being said, as it stands right now in real time, I am at $18,452 in monthly reoccurring revenue with 80% margin from actual real estate investors paying for solutions that I've built. So these are actual clients. These are not affiliates. This is not snapshot income. This is not consulting income. And so the reason that I say that is because my least favorite part about any program that I ever joined was when I joined the program, they show the amount of income that they were making. And basically, when you start putting two and two together, you realize that, you know, the thing that you just bought from them is what they're showing you how to make money from. And so I want to be 100% transparent, open and honest with you up front. I do make income as an affiliate. There will be you know, different affiliate links throughout the actual program. Everything that I link, I endorse and stand behind. But the income that I'm talking about right here is specifically from helping business owners by using Facebook ads and go high level and, you know, the systems that I've built after, you know, having an agency over the last six years. So I think it's super important to share that because I'm not here to, um, you know, say that I don't make money as an affiliate and that I don't make money selling snapshots or, you know, helping other people with high level. I'll be the first one to say that I do that. Um, however, I knew when, when it came time for me to make a program, number one, I knew that my North Star was always going to be the results that I actually get in my life with my business and that if I focused on simply doing that and creating something that I loved to do in terms of a business, that if I simply shared that information with people that wanted to learn, um, you know, it would be the best way of actually sharing, you know, how it is that I'm doing what I'm doing. And so everything that I share here, I fully stand behind. Um, you know, I could have made a program years ago, probably, and um, it just never felt right. And so I wanted to open up the program by, you know, pulling behind the curtain and showing you, you know, what the math looks like of my actual agency. That way, you know, it's fully transparent. It's out there. It's open. And hopefully if you join other programs or, you know, watch other content, um, you have a little bit more discernment of how to really look for people that are doing what you actually want to do. And that's really the reason I share this. Um, if I didn't, you know, post the numbers and all that, or if I didn't think that I had to, I, I really wouldn't. Um, but I think in this particular space, you know, there's not, there's some things that I think uh, people take advantage of with other up and coming people. And so, you know, especially if you're younger and you're watching this content, I just want to show you, you know, without any hype, without any edits, without any, you know, like noise that look, this is what I'm doing. I dropped out of school. And the moment that I dropped out of school, you know, I've been able to fully support myself through this business model that I'm going to be sharing with you. And after, you know, six years of really mastering it and designing it the way that I want, um, I'm more excited than ever to actually grow this business. And I know what I've accomplished up until this point is literally only the beginning, but this is fully 100% business owners paying me for solutions. This is not affiliate income. This is not snapshot stuff. None of that is factored into this. And I just want to let you guys know that um, because I think that's my number one job as someone that is an affiliate um, and sharing this information with other people is that they know exactly where I'm at um, and that I'm not claiming to do anything that I haven't done. So I'm going to stay within the integrity of what I've accomplished and share it from that place. And I trust that, you know, those of you that, you know, feel into the congruency of my message will you know, be able to get a lot of benefit and value from the program. And 
There are going to be people in here that watch this program that are making far more income um, with their agency, but potentially, you know, they realize the model they're in, they don't prefer. And so maybe they have a lot of team members, they have a lot of expenses, they're paying a lot of money for ads. And so there's going to be different people that join this program that, um, you know, are in it for certain reasons. So that's why I wanted to share this because there are some intangibles here um, that aren't just related to the amount of money. And it also has to do with the amount of time that I have to spend, you know, the amount of stress that I have, like, this model is more than just this is how much I make because I've made this amount before, but all I was doing was high ticket sales. And I just felt like every day I woke up and I was just like running on this, this never ending treadmill of like, you know, feast or famine income. And so I've made this amount of money before, but what I'm really sharing is not only how you can make this amount of money, but do it in a way that requires very little time. You have, you know, very low stress. You don't have anyone to manage. And like I said, you're going to piece together what you're going to piece together based on what I share and make it your own. But I think it's so important for people to say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm actually doing. And people can then freely learn from each other without feeling like there's this illusion about, hey, this guy says he's doing this. And then it just, it doesn't create the right environment to like openly grow together. So that's, that's really what I want to communicate. And like I said, I could care less about you guys knowing what I'm doing. I just want you to know that I'm doing my best to lead by example. And my North star is continuing to grow this model so that I can continue to share with you, you know, what it is that I'm doing. So now that that's out of the way, this is my actual income from my go high level agency business, which throughout the rest of these modules, I'll be showing you the specifics of, you know, how I get clients, how I onboard those clients, what I'm offering my clients, you know, pricing, and just basically the whole back end of like, you know, how to get those clients, how to get them on board, how to run the ads, how to set up these systems. So all that will be covered. But this video is just to break down, you know, hey, this is this is the truth. This is where it currently is. Okay. So my income is comprised of 13 high ticket clients paying $1,100 per month. So that adds up to $14,300 of monthly reoccurring revenue. There is one client at $497 per month. There, is, there are 12 clients at 297 per month. So this is basically uh, SaaS. And then there are five clients at 97, and this is also SaaS. So all in all, it is $18,452 in monthly reoccurring revenue, and it's comprised of 31 different clients. The 13 clients are the only done-for-you clients. These are... Uh, you know, basically more in the category of done with you slash SAS. And like I said, I'll be sharing with you all this stuff as you go through the program. But that is my actual income from, you know, running my agency. And if I pull up my, you know, SAS uh, dashboard here on high level, you can actually see it's fairly accurate with its tracking. Um, the percentages of the actual revenue distribution is inaccurate because, um, I, I think this is why, but at one point I was doing $97 per month SaaS. And when I deleted that plan, I think it like deleted it from the revenue distribution. So that's my take. But, you know, this I counted and added everything up specifically from actual payments collected. So, um, you know, this is accurate. But um, yeah, none of none of the snapshots that I sell or affiliate income or consulting passes through Stripe as reoccurring revenue. So if you're an affiliate or you know, you know how this stuff works, you'll know that that's true. So this is actual income from business owners paying for the solutions that I built. And this is the actual model that I'm going to be sharing with you throughout this program. So that's that. Now, what are my expenses? So um, the core expenses that I have are go high level at $497 per month, UpHex at $497 per month. Um, Hello Sign. This is a contract signing software that I use to basically get clients to sign the agreement that I have, um, and I'll talk about that. Um, and then Zapier, it hovers between you know twenty five dollars per month and seventy five dollars per month, depending on new clients joining and if they have other systems that I need to send leads to, as well as people from this. Uh, specific plan who use the chat GPT feature. And I'll talk more about what really matters. Like I said, as we go through the specifics and, you know, you know, I'll lay out kind of really what I found and really what I'm doing now moving forward. But if you screenshotted everything I'm doing right now in real time, all this math is congruent and lines up. So that's uh, Zapier around 20, 29 to 75 bucks, whatever those plans are. Uh, simple invoices. So this is a software that I use to send invoices. Um, I don't use it too much for uh, this particular business. I used to use it, but the tool is actually super good. Um, and it's just kind of one of those tools worth having. And I do have one client that still pays by invoice, not on the reoccurring stripe. Um, so this, you know, alone is, is just something that I have. Internet, you know, when you move out of your house and you, you know, buy your own house or apartment or whatever, I mean, you're going to have to pay for internet if you're not already. So internet and then Slack, which is where I communicate with all of my done for you clients. 
um, chat GPT. So this is a combination of, you know, chat GPT plus and the API usage that we use for this. Um, some of these are rough estimates, you know, just based on like averages, some months it's higher, some months it's lower. Um, but these are the core expenses and the general layout of like how much my agency costs per month. And then uh, Fiverr. So I use Fiverr for one-off tasks as well as um, paid ads. So I'll talk about, you know, that when we get into the paid ad stuff. And then QuickBooks, this is just for all of my, you know, accounting. And then account, my accountant basically uses, you know, QuickBooks to manage all the, you know, revenue and stuff like that. Bank fees, this is 30 bucks a month. I'll talk about this, uh, you know, in later modules. And then referral fees. So I pay out referral fees for clients that refer me, you know, other clients. And I'll break that down later, but this is basically around how much I pay out per month. So all in all, it's $3,969 in monthly expenses. Um, and keep in mind, I've designed, specifically designed these expenses in a way where they're, you know, basically contingent upon the income, right? So referral fees only matter when I get and collect an actual payment. So it's not leads, it's not appointments, it's not transfers. The only, you know, the only time that I pay this out is when I have collected money. So really on average, um, based on what I've seen, I see like a, you know, for every $1 in referral fees I pay out, you know, I get three to $4 in um, revenue. So this is technically it's an expense, but um, if all clients that um, originated from referrals canceled, um, this would not have to be paid. So this is anchored based on, you know, actual income. And then, you know, if you look at the rest of these, right, like none of these are like contract based and, you know, they're all essential and they all pay for themselves. Um, so yes, they are technically expensive, uh, expenses, but you know, like I said, if I lost all of my clients for whatever reason, and just the entire, you know, business just was shut down, I wouldn't be obligated to pay for any of these. And that I think was one of the first keys that I figured out to unlocking this model is you want to be extremely flexible in your expenses and design them in a way where they're contingent upon some sort of result, not, um, you know, like just something that may or may not work. And so this, I'm only able to really do this well because I know how to get good results. And I'll talk more about that journey as I go through the rest of the, you know, this particular module. But yeah, that's the layout. So $18,452 in monthly reoccurring income. And, you know, this is just as it stands now, it's continuously growing and there's things that I'm doing and working on to continue uh, growing this. So it's not stopping at any point, but this is a nice sweet spot that I found because um, I think it ends up being, you know, it's basically $4,000 in expenses. So it's around 14, 40, uh, 14, 452 in profits. And, um, you know, if you basically break it down into how much time I spend, it's anywhere from, you know, 400 to $735 in net profits per hour that I actually spend. And the cool thing is that time that I spend on the actual business is at this point now creating content. And it's really just creating new product, which I'll talk about later. So it's a pretty sweet agency. I definitely don't spend over 20 hours per month on it. And, you know, don't get me wrong. It took a lot of time and effort and, and thinking to design it this way. And I'm going to show you how to design it. But, um, you know, like I said, if you take, you know, all these different ex like clients away, none of these are, are um, mandatory, um, except maybe like internet and, you know, some of these other things, but technically I don't need any of these if I, you know, if I lost clients and, you know, that's one of the biggest, um, you know, keys to designing this model is, you know, design it in a way that's flexible where, you know, you're not obligated to any sort of, you know, contract or long-term thing when you haven't proven, you know, that your business can produce consistent cash flow. Okay. So that's also why I've spent so much time not hiring anyone. Um, because I really wanted to master the model and figure out all the necessary ingredients that go into this. And, you know, now I've really figured it out. And obviously there's, it's a never ending journey of learning and implementing, innovating, testing, and, and, you know, doing things like that. But I've really, you know, now I really feel confident that, you know, if I did want somebody to run this entire model, you know, I know exactly who I'm looking for. And before I tried hiring people too early in my personal opinion, and I was basically just doing all the work, you know, making all the sales just to pay for, you know, a VA to do everything. And they were just taking orders from me. They didn't even just, they weren't actually, even after months and months of training, it still felt like I hadn't mastered the model yet. And so it wasn't the VA's fault. It was my fault that I wasn't, you know, crystal clear on how this should be run. And so now I know how to run it. And so there's the actual math. Okay. Um, okay. So this is where my actual clients come from. 
So my current premium clients, um, there are 14 of them. 21% of them have come from YouTube organic. And this is even a newer thing that I'm doing. And so um, I would actually say this is only, you know, within maybe one to two months of pushing what I'm, what I'll talk about as that gets more refined, but this is just as it stands, 21% of current clients paying a high ticket, uh, you know, monthly fee come from YouTube organic, 7% come from Facebook ads, and then 71% come from referral. So um, referral is a big uh, piece of my business. And like I said, now that I've really figured out, you know, how this model really works and how I want it to work, um, I plan on, you know, growing this number quite a bit and it'll start to level out. Um, but for me, the referral piece was, was key because, and I'll talk about this in other modules, but it's key because, you know, if you're able to get a client organically, get them results organically, and then they organically share your services with other people, that's how, you know, you have something actually good. And so to me, this, this is just signal that I have something good. And, um, I'll talk more about that later. This is just the breakdown and then current SaaS clients. So the 12, 297 and the 597 um, comprise of, you know, basically, oh, I had this at 100% YouTube because I, um, I didn't combine the, um, the 12 and the 15. I just had the 12 and then I realized I, I still had people on $97. But basically, you know, I don't know what the specific percentage is, but 15 out of the 17 are uh, from YouTube organic. And then one is a referral and then one is direct. So I just want to make sure that's accurate, but this is correct. I just, like I said, at one point, I just, I didn't even know that I still had five people paying the 97. So, um, yeah, so basically 15 out of the 17 SaaS clients, uh, have come from YouTube organic. One is a referral and then one is a direct. Okay. So somebody that I just knew from prior. Okay. Now, this is truth, okay? So I hope you can already tell that this program is gonna be different. Now, yeah, there's still a lot of work you'll have to do and things you have to apply and just you'll see as you go through the program, but this is truth, okay? So this is not this is not affiliate commission, snapshot sales, something I did you know, in 2018 or something I did back then and something that worked then. Like this is right now, literally at the time of this recording, like, and I'm more excited than ever to run this model. And like I said, it's still my North Star the affiliate income and selling snapshots and anything related to teaching other people how to use high level um, to me is just a byproduct of actually using the system and the software to actually run my own business and change my own life. And so to me, it's still the North star. Um, and I know some people would say, Oh, you could just make way more just doing affiliate. And that's actually true. That's actually true. I can tell you that that is true. If I was only focused on affiliate stuff um, and pushing that, um, then, you know, yeah, I probably could easily surpass the amount that I make from this over time. And it would be way more hands off. Now, um, I just something in me, I just have to be doing what I'm like telling people, like, I, I don't know, I can't, I literally wouldn't be able to like sleep at night if I was like doing, telling somebody something I did like four or five years ago. And just like knowing that things have changed, knowing that, um, it's different out there. So I don't know what that is. That may just be because, you know, how I was raised and just that I feel like I'm fully responsible for my own success. And I just had to learn that at a really young age. So for me, um, you know, like I just have this, this thing where like, if I'm not doing what I'm saying and I'm just, I don't know, there's just something about it. So I, I can't even explain it. It just, that's what gives me the confidence to share with you what I'm sharing. That's what gives me the confidence to push you guys that want to do this. And you're starting out. Cause it's like, dude, I'm doing it right now. I'm getting clients. I'm getting clients with YouTube organic. I'm getting clients without ads. I'm getting clients that get results. But when you did that four or five years ago, I don't know if I'm not doing it now. It's like, not that it still wouldn't work. Um, and there may be a time, you know, where I'm not running this model, but, um, I don't know. I'm just speaking from where I am right now that I'm doing it and, and I am more excited to do it than ever. And it makes me more excited to help you guys as an affiliate or just somebody showing you what I'm doing. Cause I, I just, I love what I've actually created. I can truly say that like, and I want to share that with you guys. And, um, you know, I know that it's the reality of it is that, you know, very few will truly, truly implement it. But, you know, I can't wait to start to hear from you guys. Like I'm actually on the path to creating, you know, this, this business that gives me actual time and I don't have all this stress. And I'm so excited to just see this, you know, like you guys bear the fruit of this work that, you know, 
that I've been able to do. And just like, that's where I'm coming from. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I hope me sharing and I was kind of like, man, should I share this? And like, I just, I don't like being like out there with like, look at all this stuff I'm doing. Um, and not that I'm even saying, you know, these numbers are like, wow, look at me. But just if I never had to talk about any of that, I, I really wouldn't, but I've seen, you know, just different affiliates and things like this come up. And like, I started putting two and two together and seeing different, you know, numbers. And it's like, man, like, this is just from, selling people on what they're doing on on it and i don't know i just something doesn't sit right with me so i figured i had to kind of put myself out there and, and share with you guys so that you guys also can help people in the future from from this place so yeah getting back to it so i spend one to five hours per week on my agency in fact uh today is a sunday and um you know woke up had great sleep and um you know i spent probably like an hour basically just going through all my clients um, ad accounts and just basically just I'll talk more about the specifics and the service delivery modules. But, um, you know, just going through my clients accounts and just like, you know, refreshing some of the ads and just deleting some of the stuff that doesn't need to be there. And, you know, it took me probably like, you know, 40 minutes on, on the ads part to go through, you know, 13 clients and just make good updates and stuff like that. And um, just communicate those updates to them. Um, and, you know, within an hour, it was like that was that was all I had to do now. The um, and that'll last, you know, throughout the entire week, I'll still be checking and doing little things. But um, actual work is really more the ads themselves. And, you know, up front, the work more comes down to, you know, onboarding the client, figuring out your product. But once you figure it out, you're really more just, um, you know, keeping the, the product organized. That's really how I would describe it. So I don't have any employees. Um, I'm not currently running any ads, so there's no, I'm not paying any Facebook or anything to actually go and get me clients and I'm not doing any sort of outreach either. And really the reason for that is because, you know, I did run ads for quite a bit and I joined a program where it was all about running ads and they basically recommended that I go from the monthly fee that I was charging to like $10,000 over six months. And I used to do high ticket sales, you know, so I know how to do high ticket sales, but, um, I think when you're younger, like you want high ticket sales, you need to move fast, you're down to kind of just put it all out on the line. As I've gotten a little bit older, more experienced, figured out, you know, my ideal client, my service delivery, you know, what it is I want to do. I really see it as, as business. And for me, the game of winning in business was literally spending the least amount of effort and energy and producing the maximum income. To me, that's like the core of business. Some people have different um, North stars for business. They, they want to be the best. They want to be the biggest agency. They want to have the most clients. I never cared about that for me, you know, like the, the epitome of business success is the least amount of input and the maximum output. And obviously considering, you know, being, being moral, feeling good about your work, enjoying what you're doing, but the intangibles aside, that was how I always envisioned like true business success was like things running on auto autopilot and basically making the most amount that you could with the least amount of time that that was my north star and that's kind of the north star of this program too and for you guys it may be different you may literally want to be high ticket sales number one salesperson the best at handling objections or the best biggest agency and i really never cared about that i think at one point i thought i had to do that and just that was why i did it but you know now i'm just like dude i'd rather create like i could care less if no one even knows like who i am if i'm owning different automated businesses that run well and work well. And, you know, as long as I feel like I'm serving and I feel good about what I'm doing and I enjoy it, um, you know, it really wouldn't matter to me that like people think I'm the best or whatever. I just like making and creating stuff. So, um, yeah, to me, that's kind of part of why I'm not chasing when I was running ads, I felt like I just became anxious. I felt like I had to raise my prices because I had to pay back those ads and it just kind of created a whole loop. Um, and I just felt like, well, if what I'm doing is actually good, shouldn't I be able to Shouldn't it be able to move and take a life of its own just through it being good? And that's kind of what I've figured out this year. It's funny because a lot of what I'm sharing in this, you know, module isn't even like hasn't even been worked on for years. Like it took me years just to figure out what I really wanted and then how to do it. And then I've pretty much been doing it like the last six months too. So excited to share with you guys as more time and time goes on, like sharing you what it what it is that I've done. So yeah. So above all else, this is more intangible. What I love what I do. 
I believe I'm really good at it. I figured out all the necessary ingredients that go into this specific model, which is a model that I've designed and it works perfect for me. So this model is my art. I'm constantly removing inefficiencies, making it more simple, making it leaner, making it faster. And it's my favorite game to play. Um, sometimes I don't talk to my clients for an entire month. We'll message back and forth. Um, but some clients, if I message them, they don't even respond. And I check in and you'll learn more about that later. But it's just my favorite game to play, like how much can I, you know, yield from being more efficient? And I just, I love it. It's, it's so fun for my mind, honestly. So I truly can say I love it. Um, and I've also unlocked a new way to grow this model, which is YouTube organic. And I'll share that as I continue to build that. And I couldn't be more excited to give everyone else a different and fresh take on what they can do. Like I said, I used to join quite a bit of programs and every time I was in them, I kind of was let down, not because it was their fault, but just because it was like everyone was saying the same thing about what to do. And I hope that this program just represents all signal and no noise for you. Like no hype and all this stuff. Just like, here's what you can do. That's what I hope it represents. So what got me here is different from what I do now. So it's also important for me to communicate that the work I had to do to get here is far different from the work that I have to do now to grow and optimize my business. Like I said, spend, you know, 40 minutes you know, refreshing ads, making sure everything's clean and organized for the week and, you know, planning out content and stuff like that. That's different than when I started. So I'm going to communicate one like, hey, here's where I'm at so you can see what's possible. But also, hey, I'm going to break down, you know, when I was starting what I had to do and what are the real core pieces and transformations I had to make to like start to carve out this model. OK, um, I'm now in a position where I know that I can grow this to thirty five thousand per month with more clients and without, you know, more than eight hours of week per work. So I truly believe that. And um, there are things I intend on doing that I'm not gonna share here right now. Um, I'm just gonna focus on what I've done up until this point, but I do share things like this to excite you about what's possible on the other side as you continue to grow this and work this model. So um, before we kind of you know wrap up this video, there are some things that are, yeah, there are specific key ingredients that go into making this recipe and I figured them out. So now that you understand where I'm at, where I'm coming from in this next part of the video, I'm going to be breaking down the model that I've designed. Okay. And then we'll get into, you know, the next video. So the traditional agency really relies on people and labor, right? Um, it relies on hiring people, sales reps, customer success managers and support, and then, you know, owners and then managers and stuff like that. Right. And it relies on custom solutions. So, you know, if, if you don't know what you're doing before you know it, you'll start offering a bunch of different things to a bunch of different types of people and you don't really have any leverage. The traditional agency also leverages paid ads to get clients and they have to usually charge high prices because they have to collect back their ad spend. And it's really your fault, which I'll talk about down here, but really lack of results for a client is kind of like your fault, the agency's fault. I'll show you how to you know switch that dynamic. And the customer usually comes from a position of authority where the agency is left attempting to prove themselves and all these things I experience. Okay. So the agency is left attempting to prove themselves throughout the working relationship. Right. So for example, like, let's say you get on a sales call from somebody that came from Facebook ads and it's like, well, why are you different? You know, the customer says, or the lead at that point, why are you different? You know, what can you do for me? This guy down the street is charging this price. Um, you know, this guy down the street says they'll do this. Um, this guy's guaranteeing this, right? And it's basically like, oh, shoot, I have to prove myself to you why I'm worthy enough to work with you. And if we start our relationship based on that dynamic, then the entire duration of our working relationship, unconsciously, the agency owner is like trying to prove themselves to somebody that potentially has already made up their mind. And they have to basically like that every ad they run, every little thing they do comes from a place of like, damn, like I got to get results for this person, right? And if you really, if this is accurate or you felt this before, if you feel into where that comes from, it comes from a place of fear, right? And so don't get me wrong, you could get the occasional, you know, switch where you, you do get the results, they're so happy and whatever, whatever. Um, but, you know, in the majority of cases that I found, it came from a place of fear. So at any point in time, I felt like that client could call me, they could email me, they could say something, you know, out of nowhere. And basically they held like the relationship in the palm of their hand, right? Like I was basically being controlled by the 
customer, the client. And they ended up really being like, I ended up really being like a part-time employee for that client. And it was kind of like my job security was in their hands at every moment of time. And if I didn't prove myself fast, right, then I'm going to get cut. And that's really one of the key transformations that, you know, I hopefully encourage you to make because at the end of the day, I can tell you whatever I, you know, I want. And then it's up to you to, to decide and do that and see if that's aligned for you. But that's one of the key, you know, transformations that I made was like, instead of this dynamic, like, hey, what can you do for me? Why are you different? What makes your agency different? You know, um, what are you going to guarantee? How do I get a refund if this doesn't work? Right. Some of these are valid questions, but really you, what you want to pick up is the energy and where it comes from, because it's reasonable to know certain logistics of how something works, right? Like, hey, if I buy this and I don't like it, like what happens, right? Okay, that's fine. But when you feel like your client or customer is coming from a place of fear, right? Or a victim mentality, or they're coming from a place of like, hey, I don't really want to take respo full responsibility for my life and the decisions that I make in my business. And so if I pay you, right? And I don't get exactly what I paid for, then how do I basically like get my money back? Or how, how do we like, how do I basically, um, yeah, just remove my responsibility from it being on me and like, I'm just going to put it on you, right? Underneath the words, you can feel it, right? And this was something I used to just like accept and just be like, okay. And then I'm like selling myself. And now it's like, people pay for a consultation call to work with my actual agency to work with me. And, you know, I've told some people that I'm doing that and you guys may already know that, but I talk to other agency owners and, you know, they're making double, triple in revenue, but their profits less than me. They have all these team members and they're constantly proving and guaranteeing and doing all this stuff to people. And, you know, they're asking me, well, how do you handle this objection? How do you handle that? Like people will pay to get on a call with me and um, I have no interest in selling them. Not one, not one bit. I have no interest. Now that takes time. This is where like we're, I'm going back into what got me here is different from what I do now, but you have to cultivate a level of detachment because when I get on a call with somebody, if anything, they're selling me and it's not some mind game and some thing I'm like scripting out. It's like, I want to hear, usually I know pretty quickly if somebody's going to get results with our system. And I can tell that by their demeanor. I can tell that by the questions they ask. I can tell that about the level of experience that they have in their business, how much revenue they have, their team size. Um, but really it's a feeling and it's also the quality of the questions. Now, the qual this is a quote I've learned from Tony Robbins at a very young age, which is the quality of your questions is the quality of your life. And you know, every day, every moment, we're constantly asking and answering questions in our mind, right? And so you know, when people are asking low quality questions, right? When you get really good at this stuff by working on yourself, you're going to start to realize that people have already without even saying it explicitly in their question, they're not fully self-assured in their own capability. They may not have a lot of money, right? And so there's a lot of factors that go into where a question originates from. And so when they start asking questions that are underneath the words, basically saying, you know, I don't really have a lot of money. I don't really have a lot of success in my business. I'm not consistently getting clients. I'm newer to paid ads or whatever. You need to assure me, right, that what you're going to provide makes up for all of my business inefficiencies. And the moment you take on those type of clients, it doesn't mean you can't help someone that's that needs, you know, that's struggling or needs to get to the next level, but the moment you accept that agreement from that place, which is like I'm really counting on you, right, to turn this around for me. You are left playing the same game. It doesn't matter how much money they pay you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much money they pay you. It doesn't matter what you think you're getting. If you're compromising that, you're always going to feel like you're, every single thing you do is to prove yourself. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, all the clients that I work with now, they own their experience. If they go, you know, $10,000 of ads and don't close a deal, they believe it's their fault, right? It doesn't mean I'm not there to support. It doesn't mean I'm not there making things better. It doesn't mean that I don't fully own my experience and what I'm providing. It just means really successful people 
are going to own their journey, right? And own the decision they made to work with you. And when you start taking on people that come from that place, what are you going to do for me? What, you know, uh, what can you, like, how are you different? What are you going to guarantee? What if it doesn't work? When people have made up their mind, I really just pay them no mind. Like, I, what am I here to convince you of, you know? And, and this is where you growing as your own business owner and you actually implementing and putting what you do um, into action and implementing it and getting real results. This is why results are number one, because when you don't have results, right, people will push you around like that. And you don't have, you don't need results to not be pushed around. But, you know, if people say, well, what about this? Does this work in this? It's like, you can go watch this video and decide if it works because really, you know, everything works in their own way, right? Everything works in its own way. You can do cold outreach. You can do this, you can do that, but that's not a high quality question, right? So watch out for low quality questions because they're going to lead to low quality clients. And when you have low quality clients, nothing will get your heart rate beating more than in the middle of the night or waking up in the morning, feeling like you are in debt and you owe somebody something and you've got to do everything you can to make sure their life and business goes the way that they want it to. And you're responsible, right? And they're holding this money that they're giving to you, you know, captive. And if you don't do it, they're going to take it away from you. That's all fear. So 99% of the stuff you need to do is master yourself and master, you know, you have to master yourself, master self-sabotage, master understanding boundaries, because I can give you the numbers. And that's why I was like, yeah, I'll give everyone the numbers, show everyone the specifics. But the real battle you're going to go through doing this is against yourself. And so if you start compromising and taking on clients that you know have already made up their mind, they don't have the experience, they're not going to really work uh, well with you, and they don't have the right expectation, you start compromising what you really need to make it work. And so you know when you're going to build a, a beautiful building, right, or a statue or something, you know, you engineer it and you plan it and you create projections based on what resources are required and you factor in, you know, potential things that could change and happen. And so it's the same thing as when you're providing a productized service, you know, you shouldn't be compromising and changing how you're positioning what you're doing based on how you feel someone's level of success is. And that's what I used to do. And that's why I just, you know, I still was doing the same service, right? And, and you know, getting like leads and all that stuff. But none of my clients would ever have anything to show for it. And it just left me in this cycle of like, damn, like I got a client, did all this work. And before you know it, they're canceling and, you know, they didn't even get any results and all this stuff. So, you know, you got to really switch that dynamic and you can only do that by, by working on yourself. And it really puts you in a position of, of like being in this cus customer service business versus being in like a product support business, which I'll talk about. So my agency right, instead of relying on people and doing all these different things, um, relies on software and systems, and it relies on new products, right, not custom solutions, and I'll get into more specifics later. Um, but that those are the two, one of the two core differences as well is it's not, you know, just people and places just, you know, like to, to cover up the bad product. It's like, we're going to leverage software and systems and products so we can get actual feedback from good clients, good customers, successful clients. And that will inform you on what you need to do with the product because really successful people, they'll give you good feedback and um, you need that to make it better. And when you have bad clients, low quality clients, giving you victim you know, based feedback and like, I'm not responsible for my life and business and this thing sucks, you start freaking out and changing stuff and, and it was fine. And I can tell you that from experience. Um, so my agency also leverages organic content and referrals. And what's great about referrals is you get high quality clients because high quality clients work with high quality other people. They don't want to work with, you know, people that are in that space. Success attracts success. I mean, that's as simple as this. So um, my agency also sells a product slash solution that is fixed. Okay. So when you have custom services, custom solutions, you're taking on the wrong type of client. Um, and there's really no wrong type of client. There's just clients that teach you lessons. And if you decide to learn them, then, you know, you can grow. But, you know, you go from, you know, relying on a lot of people, relying on custom solutions and really always accommodating and changing what you're doing for those types of clients to having, you know, softwares and systems and products, organic content and referrals. And your agency then sells a fixed solution, right? Like a software, like an iPhone, like here's the iPhone, right? And so... If you're selling an iPhone and let's say the client 
comes back and says, hey, you know, this app isn't loading or it's slow or whatever, right? It's more like you, the Apple sales rep, if there was one, versus, and the client and the software, right? Like versus the problem, right? When you are in a model like with custom solutions, you know, the human is like making new work. And so people will always pick apart and find imperfection in everything. And so when you say, oh, well, I'm gonna go do this for you. I'm gonna go do that. There's so many opportunities for them to poke at, oh, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? And then the human's then responsible to go back and fix it, right? When you sell these fixed products like software and systems and an iPhone, um, you go from if the iPhone is having an error to, hey, I'm here to assist you, you know, client, get your result of this phone loading faster. And now they're coming to you, you know, and saying, okay, like, here's this object, which is not me. And then here's you who like sold it to me. And like, let's make sure we fix the actual product, right? Not let me go make you a new iPhone, right? And that's the really, that's the key distinction is you need to position, you know, what you're offering as something that is more fixed and proven and, and uh, tried and true and tested. And if there are things that potentially aren't performing as well, you know, ways that you can improve the product and like, you know, fix a bug versus, oh, shoot, well, you're telling us to do this. Now let's go do it. So, you know, before a client would say, I think we need to change the ad and I need to change this and need to change that. And then I would go do it. Now, number one, clients don't even say that to me. And two, if they mention it at all, um, you know, like I'll use data from other clients to say, no, these ads are still performing fine. We may need to like refresh them or, you know, whatever, like there's different things you can do. I'll talk about the specifics later, but I never am like, changing the product right it's like hey if you have an iphone this iphone is fixed right i can't just go to the factory and hey change this design change all that right so that's really how you want to position it as a product and you know there's things you can do to make the product better but you can't let the client go hey i want a new phone i want this because you're you're never going to make the iphone right i heard a quote the other day where i think it was i was watching a football game and they one of the coaches said you know if you start listening um I think he said, if you start listening too much, if you listen too much to the fans, you're going to end up sitting with them. And that's the same thing as what can happen when you fall into this trap is clients will push you around and test your resolve and see how much they can get out of you. And if you don't stand your ground and then you start offering all this stuff, your creation is just this, you know, thing that's all over the place and you have no leverage because you can't maintain something you're always changing and listening to, to, you know, what clients are saying. So you need to establish, which I'm going to talk about this. You need to establish your nexus of success, as I call it, and then from there, turn that into a product support business. And once you do that, that's the first key to unlocking the door. So basically our objective, right, now that I've laid out all the foundational pieces here, you know, is to create a nexus of success. And once you find it, you go all in on it and you productize it. And here's exactly what happened when I found my nexus of success. So let me pause this real quick, make sure this opens up. Okay, perfect. So this is how I, I mean, I found my nexus of success. It was very clear, right? I was working with agents and doing all these different things. And I'll show you on this sheet what, what I ended up doing. But I ended up working with an investor, made a system for him, started running it, started getting deals. He started having success. It was very clear. And um, I knew I had found the nexus of success, but I didn't quite know to the level that I did. And I talked to him at the end of the year. He had first, that was the first client that ever paid me every month on time for a year straight. And I still work with this client. It's been in December, it'll be three years. And um, I never had that happen before. I never had that client consistently get deals. Like every month he was getting deals and results. He had the right ad spend. He had a team. There were all these new things that that happened that I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never experienced this before. Uh, I was close. I just wasn't ready in my own way, right? And so basically what ended up happening was I talked to him and said, hey, dude, you know, I know you close deals and da, 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 like out of curiosity, how much did you make from the system? And I, I didn't care if, you know, I had not, it was not coming from a place of let me get a cut of it or whatever. It was just literally like, you know, hey, I want to document this. And he told me, he's like, yeah, dude, I made like $600,000 from this system. And I was like, holy shit. Like I was literally like, I like I felt like in that moment and I remember I told my cousin um he was like dude like and this client took like the least amount of effort everything lined up and that's how you'll know when you find this thing everything just lines up it'll be so obvious and you may already have this right now you just may have so many weeds in the garden that you're not focused on it and you're caught up in this new thing and that new thing and you may already have this okay so 
that was what happened to me. And so what I ended up doing was this, okay? So let me explain this real quick. So basically what I did was I took all of the different clients that I had up until that point and I wrote their, their name here. This is the actual one, but I made a copy so not everyone's name is out there. And there's still, you know, hundreds of like customers that have bought products and stuff for me, two actual business owners that I didn't have. But these were like the main people that like paid a decent price that I worked with more like one-on-one. -on -one. And so I put all their names here, you know, in chronological order. And I basically put, I defined all the services that I did as a product. So for example, um, my first client was a Facebook lead forms client and I advertised like her listings. I advertised her, um, you know, uh, like I tried to get buyer seller leads, I tried to grow her page, all this stuff, right? So I just categorized that as like a Facebook lead form. And then I got my second client and kind of did the same thing. And then I got a chiropractic client and I just categorized all these different experiences that I had and just basically like categorized them, right? And in order to categorize things, you have to simplify them. I couldn't write everything specifically out. So basically you'll see I jumped around quite a bit, right? And this is what I'm telling you about I've actually done everything I'm saying. So what I did was I figured out who the customer was. I defined the service or product that I offered and just categorized it and did my best to group them together if they were fairly similar. Then I categorized how much the client paid me, how much they paid over time. Like, so they paid me this amount up front and then they paid this much, like this is how long they stayed with me. And then what was their result? And I simplified the result from like, did the client make money from my service or product? And, you know, I kind of made this very, very conservatively to the point where I probably could have had way more people in here that got results that if I really went to the like, you know, uh, every single detail, I would have found way more. But what I focused on, because when you do this type of stuff, you have to simplify. And so you have to categorize things, even though they may not seemingly be the exact same. That way you have some clarity. And then what I did was just focus on like clear cut signal and result. Like some of these clients, yeah, they may have got a, a deal, but they canceled and I didn't have a real relationship with them. So I was really, really, really looking for the nexus of success. Like I'm talking about my client making 600 grand and I'm working with him and he's been paying for a year straight. We have a great relationship. We do a podcast. Like that was like, what I wanted to see. And so as you can tell, I had all these clients, all these different products, all these different initial payment amounts, all these different total payment amounts. And then what I was really looking for was the signal of like the, the formula of how much they paid, how long they stayed, and then how big was the result. And to me, it was very simple. The bigger the initial payment, basically all of these, the, the perfect nexus of success would be like, this would be billion dollars, billion dollars, and billion dollars. Like they paid me a billion, they've stayed for forever, and then they're just making infinite money, right? Obviously that's not reality, but that's that's like the best case scenario is they pay me a lot, they stay forever, and they keep making money. And that's the perfect like productized service business and you spend zero time working on it. And so it was very clear where results came from. So what this pie chart is, this pie chart represents this um, it's funny, I swear that I actually did, like this is, I haven't even edited this for a long time. Like this I actually did when I was trying to figure this crap out. Like what the hell am I doing, dude? Like, I'm because I had all these things going on and this was making the real signal. So what this was, was this is a distribution of just the products delivered. So everything you see here in this column was basically all the different things that I did. So um, in relation to um, how much, or uh, in relation to, hold on. Okay, perfect. So yeah, this pie chart represents the product that I sold and then how much total pay did I actually collect from providing that service? So for example, just to simplify it, I found out that from, well, this is current now as it stands, but the done for you investor lead generation um, was 36% of like the actual total pay that I did uh, got. So I was doing all this other stuff, but what actually was getting me paid? That was the first thing. So it came down to done for you investor lead gen and generalist consulting. The second dimension of the data was what service did I provide that actually got my client paid? And <laughs> there it was. 81% of all of this crap I was doing was really, even though it was only 36% of what I was getting paid to do, it was getting 81% of the results. And even this one, 
of the done with you. This is like, I updated this for the, this program with newer clients and stuff. But basically 86% of like everything I've done has gotten my clients paid. And that's fine. Like that's the journey you go through. But when I really saw this, it still took me time to like let all this stuff die out and let go of it. But it was so clear to me that I just, I really made a transformation from, okay, if I'm going to really run a business and, and decide that the, the least amount of input I put in leading to the greatest output is how I want to run my business and my life, um, I have to trust this data regardless of my emotion. I had other clients paying for this stuff that I liked and all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, I had to look and cut through all the noise and say, hey, all these people are paying, you know, like all these people like require my time and energy and look how little like all of this you know, if this is 36% and this is 30%, basically this is 35%, this is 30. So 75% of what I was doing came from these two things. And, you know, the other 25% still required more time, more effort, worse clients, all that stuff. So this is almost the 80, 20% rule in real live data. So what I saw was like, the done for you investor lead generation is getting me the most paid and I'm not even fully focused on it. And the done for you investor lead generation is not even close to getting, uh, there's nothing even close that's getting my clients paid, which is the whole reason they sign up is so they get money. And it wasn't even close. And so this is the transformation you're gonna have to make to really productize what you're doing. And what's cool is I'm gonna show you behind the scenes of how I've done this and ways you can do it too with different types of solutions, high level provides or whatever. But this is your key. This is the key. This is where when you turn off this video or you keep replaying it, this is what you need to lock in on. Where is there a nexus of success? Where are you getting paid, right? That's, num that's one dimension, right? Where are you getting paid? But the real, the, the best way to look at it is where are you getting your clients paid? Because even if you're not getting paid, like this just so happened to be, you know, uh, like it had some signal. So I was like, oh, I'm focusing on it more, you know, at least a little bit, like a little bit, right? But the real key is where are you getting your clients paid if you're offering some sort of money making, you know, solution? Because at the end of the day, even if this done for you investor lead gen was not even paying me at all, it gave me, it wouldn't matter because it's getting my client the result. And if they're getting a result, they're going to tell their friend, I'm going to feel confident in what I'm selling. And it just, everything feeds back on this. So you need to basically, what I would suggest is depending on how much experience you have, you can model this like framework of basically just laying out all the people that have ever paid you, categorizing what they paid for, how much they paid you, how much they paid you total, and then what did they get out of it in terms of financially. And if you can't easily remember and you, can, and you have to dig through a bunch of stuff, it probably wasn't that good anyway, okay? So you kind of have to let go of it because like, trust me, when I was doing it, I'm like, man, there's people that bought my program and they probably got something, but it was like, I wasn't talking to them. They weren't raving about what, what I was doing. This was the one that knocked off. And it's funny, this is now what, probably $40,000. And look at how much more that grows. So if I updated all this, you'll see the focus as I shifted. Like now this stuff will get smaller and smaller because now I focused on it. But at one point it was way smaller than this. So find the nexus of success if you've already gotten paid and you've already started to get clients. If you don't have any clients, then this is what you got to focus on. And I'm telling you, if you start here, you're going to be way further ahead than you could be if you're chasing all these things. So when I found that, that was the key. This is what I turned into a product. And that's why now you guys know me as I work with investors. If you were to ask me when I started, I would have said, no, I'm not, I don't work with it. I don't, I had no idea, right? But when I figured out this is what's working, I just went all in and now I only work with investors. And that is the, that is what, that is the tipping of the, the sphere that led to creating the SaaS, that led to growing as an affiliate, that led to selling the snapshots because I figured out the core problem I was solving I refined it, I defined it, I put it into a product, and then boom, it just went from there. And the last thing is, um, you know, this client, right, referred me, I don't know, there's no name, but this client referred me this client, and then the second client referred me, I think, five people, okay? So this one client that I got these this result for, boom, this client probably referred me, if you look at it from like level one and two, um, probably seven, right? So almost everyone came from that result. So if you think that you gotta go out and just keep marketing and selling, 
and not get results. Well, I'm here to show you that, you know, there was a while in my agency where I was only making, you know, five to five to eight grand a month. But I was so dialed in on this, this process and product that um, it paid back tenfold. So um, that's the approach I took. It's not going to obviously be for everyone. But now look, you can see there's a $18,000 a month agency with you know, 71% coming from getting that nexus of success. And once you have it, that's your case study. That's what you design your website around. That's what you design your blog around. That's what you market. That's what you, it, it just, everything feeds off that. So that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. And I'm looking forward to you guys finding what that nexus of success is for you.